some um, concepts. So let's just draw a schematic and I have a system and I add heat in and I remove heat. And this is my surroundings. And I'm going to say that the change in internal energy of my surroundings is equal to zero. So I want to talk about a thermal energy reservoir. And in this case, when I said my surroundings, which are allowing heat to leave it and come back, and when I said the internal energy of my surroundings is equal to the change in internal energy of my surroundings is equal to zero, really it's not equal to zero. But remember when I talked about dropping an ice cube into the ocean? And how does that influence the internal energy of the ocean? Granted, the ocean is, you know, say, on average, you know, room, room temperature, right? I drop an ice cube in it, I should decrease the temperature of the ocean, which means it's, but, okay. So it does decrease, but it's so small, it doesn't matter. So that's where this thermal energy reservoir. The ocean is so massive that even though my system or my reservoir is so massive, that even though I can have heat exchange between my system and my reservoir, that this is approximately equal to zero. So thermal energy reservoir is hypo hypothetical or actual. Body with large thermal energy or thermal energy capacity. So M C P relative to the system. And in this case, my surroundings can act as a thermal energy reservoir if large mass and or large heat capacity. Relative to So, so an example relative to large heat capacity, so water has a large heat capacity. So if I took, say, one gallon of water and put that, and then I had a vacuum, right, and evacuated it, so all I had is water there, and then I added, and so one gallon of water is probably like three pounds or something like that, right, or two pounds, I guess I can. So, well, anyways, I don't know off the top of my head. But anyways, so about two pounds. If I added two pounds of air, would that influence, right, at a lower, t at like ice cold air to room temperature water, would that air, of even though they have relative masses, decrease the temperature of my water? And it's no, because the heat capacity of air is like 0.14. Joules per centimeter cubed Kelvin, whereas the heat capacity of water is 4.18, so water has a large heat capacity. So, But typically, large mass always works, but you can also do things of comparative masses with much, with large difference in heat capacities. So my thermal energy reservoir can be a source or sink for energy, in this case, I have a source, and I got heat leaving, or I could have Q in, and my reservoir would be a, a sink. So it would combine this idea of thermal energy source with thermal energy sink, 
and we have heat out and heat leaving. And in this case, I can make a heat engine. So high temperature source. Of course, it's a source, so it's a thermal energy reservoir, large mass. And I have a low temperature sink. And then here's my system, which is a heat engine. And here I've written it, I've described it in such a way that it operates in a cycle. So I have some Q in from my high temperature source, and then it rejects my system, my heat engine rejects heat to a low temperature sink. And the end result, which is of interest to an engineer, is there's net work out. So heat engine is usually, or usually a, or heat engine is usually use a working fluid transfer heat from the source to the sink. So what would be an example of a working fluid? What would be an example of a working fluid? Water, Water air. Ethanol, okay, just any type of fluid. So they're not talking about radiation usually is where that's kind of come getting to. And it's using a fluid, so you're not talking about just like copper pipes, right, or copper rods. So usually some type of fluid. So, so I already said this in words. So heat engine receives. heat from high temperature source converts part of this to work rejects the remaining low temperature sink and operates in a cycle. So what, it, what, what would be an example of the opposite of a heat engine? This is a steak. opposite of heat engine, consider my sink a stake. Yeah, a refrigerator. And then if it's the opposite, I remove heat from my stake, my refrigerator, right, consumes electric energy, right, power, and then rejects the rest to the house. So in this case, a refrigerator, which would be the opposite. Now this wouldn't be a thermal energy reservoir, but I would still have one in the house. So you need at least for all these type of thermodynamic type processes, you need at least one thermal energy reservoir when you're talking about heat engines or refrigerators. So the heat engine uses two of them, right? thermal energy sink and a thermal energy source or reservoir source. Okay. Work to heat. Always true. Heat to work. Not always.
いですよ。So heat to work not always true because of what? Why? Second law, right? Of course, work to heat always true because of work to heat always true first and second law. But really, this is a this is always true because of the second law too. Not everything is reversible. Right, so the amount of heat and work to the amount of heat could be close to zero, but really, the reversible. The idea of complete reversibility is just a concept. Really, it doesn't exist. There's always some form of friction, right, that takes place. There's always some impurity in your system. There's always a defect in your system. So if you were to get rid of friction and have a system that is frictionless, there'd be some type of defect in it. So then you wouldn't have it purely reversible. If you had like a perfect system and operate it in some way, there would always be some, you know, a homogeneous perfect crystal. There would always be some friction of another system in interacting with it or some loss. So this one is also second law. And the first law allows you to describe. How much heat was right? How these two are related to each other? When you do an energy balance, of course, this the first law also law gives you an expression to relate the heat and work. So the first law gives you expressions, and you use the second law too, which gives you a relationship, which allows you to get relations between the heat and work. And then you have two equations and say two unknowns: work is unknown and heat is unknown. You can get a, you can get a final answer. So related to this, the net work output. So work out net equals work out minus work in. Very general, right? So I just want to remind you that if I have a closed system going through a cycle, so I talked about this when we we're talking related to chapter four. We're dealing with cycles and closed systems, and so any system that operates in a cycle, I go from one state to another state to another state to another state, and then back again. If it's operating in a cycle, I'm right back to that same temperature and pressure that I started with during a cycle. So given I'm at T1, P1. After the cycle, the internal energy has to be equal to what it was before. So the change in internal energy through a cycle is equal to zero. So just remind a closed system going through a cycle, delta E system is equal to zero. So let's just do, let's just draw another schematic of something where I have an evaporator and I have some heat in, and I have a pump with some work in. I have a condenser with some heat out, and then I have a turbine with some work out. And I'm going to say this is a steam power plant for. So I'm taking heat in from a volcano. I don't know. Taking heat in from something where it has a lot of hot mass, where if I take it in, it doesn't change its hot mass, right? So taking it in, I always use for like these type of things, like a volcano and an ocean, right? So take heat in, take water from the ocean, evaporate it, create it into steam. So I have steam, high internal energy, right? High enthalpy, high entropy comes through. Decrease the energy of my steam coming in, 
can't work out. So now I don't have steam, say I have a saturated liquid, right? And then I condense it. I need it, I need it to be, say, say I have right here, not necessarily, I have a saturated liquid, but it's still in the vapor phase, it's no longer steam, so I might still, or I, maybe, I, maybe let's just say I, I have really hot steam and then I have steam coming out, but it's not as high of an energy. And then I have to, in order to pump it, pumps don't work, there are pumps out there that work for gases. But typically pumps, which we use in an aquarium or wherever, they work good when they're in the liquid state. So then I condense it to bring it from steam to liquid, but in order to get it from one side of the bell curve to the other, just draw my bell curve for this process, okay? So evaporator, I have liquid coming in here. Let's say this is one. I go to here. Two. Then I go to here. Three. Then I go to there. Four. So one, two, three, four. And then I go through the pump. Well, actually, four needs to be on the liquid side, so four would be two. But I have something like this related to my bell curve. So I evaporate it, make steam, a lot of energy, get work output. So on this thing, I could draw Q in, right? Work out, Q out, work in. So if I want to draw this on a diagram, this, could, this is my PV curve. Given I have a PV curve, right? Anyways, this area. So there's a clockwise workout, and nevertheless, I'm just doing more than I anticipated on this. So um, have this system, steam power plant, first law, my net workout equals Q in minus Q out. From energy balance. How do I know that work net out equals Q in minus Q out? Wouldn't you have to factor in the work in as well? It's factored in. So what I'm getting to is that this is a cycle. If I do energy balance, what do I have in? I have heat in, work in. Q in plus work in minus Q out Minus work out, minus Q in, minus Q out, minus work out, right? Equals delta U, or delta E. What is delta E? Zero. So net work out, Q in minus Q out. From energy balance, delta U equals zero, or delta E equals zero. The last thing I wanted to say is the thermal efficiency of a process that's related to the net work out over Q in, which equals one minus Q out over Q in, this type of system. And we'll pick up from here next week.